Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are doing well from wherever you're watching around the world. We do have an international audience that follows our uh, frivolity, <laughs> our levity, our levity, and all the other stuff we uh, can conjure up here at our Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We've done about... Uh, I think almost 750 episodes live seven days a week since we started the series uh, just two years ago. Now, just think about that. MASH was on CBS for 11 years, and they did 230 episodes in 11 years. We've done 740 plus in two years. That's a lot of talking. A lot of great guests, too. If you guys uh, would like to comment in our JMS uh, Lovely chat room, as we call it, there's a chat room available when the show is live, like it is right now. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, doesn't cost a thing. Just click that red button that says subscribe. You can actually be a part of the action as the show is on. We can see some of your comments as well. You can chat amongst yourselves. A lot of the guests uh, see that and uh, we see it as well. And the viewers too, you guys can chat amongst yourselves. And also don't forget to leave a comment on our YouTube channel. If you enjoy this episode and all the episodes that uh, we bring at your guests coming in from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, just about everywhere you can think of. And it's really cool that you're here with us. So thanks for joining us, gang. If you're not having a good day, well, we're going to uh, excite you with the guest we have here. A legend, yes, an iconic musician, a brilliant guitarist, and more. Ricky Medlock is joining us live and direct from warm and sunny South Florida, where he makes his home. He's in his fantastic studio. We're going to see that as well. Maybe you even get a chance to see one of the ladies. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we will reveal that. <laughs> uh, of course, you guys know that uh, he is from the incredible group, Leonard Skinner, and also founded Blackfoot as well. And you guys are all excited. Both are iconic groups. And uh, matter of fact, uh, Ricky is still touring with Leonard Skinner. He's one of the original members of Leonard Skinner as well. And the amount of music that they're responsible for over the years is extraordinary. He spent a lifetime and not one, but two phenomenal bands. And he's gotten to live a life doing what he loves. And he feels very blessed to have done it. And Leonard Skinner and continues to and Blackfoot as well, which again, he founded before there was Blackfoot. Ricky was an original member of Leonard Skinner with Bob and Leon, Ronnie, Gary and Alan. This fact is noted historically by his playing three instruments, singing lead on several songs and having six songs, either written or co-written by Ricky on the Ellis first and last album. That's right. And after a couple of years uh, with Leonard Skinner and wanting to be a front man and play guitar, Ricky left and then he co-founded co Blackfoot. And uh, he found much success with the new band of Native American Brothers and most notable with the album Strikes back in 1979 and Tom Catton in 1980 and uh, Marotta in 1981. Several years passed in Blackfoot, and they just took a little break. And Ricky was then invited back to Leonard Skinner by fellow original band member Gary Rossington to be one of the three lead guitar players in the iconic band. And that is where Ricky has been for the last over 26 years. He owns the Blackfoot trademark, will always be connected to Blackfoot, and he's now mentoring and producing music for the current Blackfoot as well. And Ricky continues on his musical journey with Leonard Skinner, and uh, he shares the adventures often. He's going to share some of those great adventures with us here on the show, gang. It's so cool to have you here. We welcome you to the Gym Masters Show Live. If this is your first time here, uh, good to have you with us. And again, we're talking about uh, a group that has really, really stood the test of time. If you really think about all the iconic songs, too, and, I, and you guys probably... Super fans have the albums, probably the original vinyl, maybe cassettes as well. Then you got the CDs and you transferred everything. <laughs> and then a lot of groups, you know, are coming out with the vinyl again, too, which is very, very cool to see. And uh, these are just some shots that we have here. We're going to show you lots more as we chat with Ricky. We're also going to catch up with him to see some of the things. There he is there at the group. 
This goes back a little bit, right? It's really cool stuff. Vintage stuff you're going to enjoy and see here on the Gym Master Show Live. But uh, we're also going to catch up with Ricky to see, you know, some of the other things that he does in his life. In addition to being a, a prolific and iconic performer, uh, some, there's another great shot. I tell you, we got some really cool things to show you guys. And, of course, uh, Blackfoot 2, that incredible southern native rock band uh you can probably hear all of the tunes in your head as we speak really cool stuff we've got here gang and it's an honor and a pleasure to welcome ricky you know he's a busy guy too and uh the fact that he's taking time to join us here on the gym master show live i mean he's in south florida he could be swinging in a hammock right now with a banana colada in one hand and his feet in the sand he certainly earned it. He's done enough in his life, you know, and uh, he's also very inspiring. He's an inspiring guy. He's very passionate about life, enthusiastic, and he also likes to pay it forward. You know, he likes to mentor others who are up and coming in music, which I think is a, a rare gift. A lot of people don't do that, you know, uh, and he doesn't rest on his laurels. He's still out there doing it and uh are we the lucky ones. So good to have everybody here. I see lots of comments built up. Again, if you want to comment during the show, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can be part of the JMS Lovety chat room live. Don't forget to leave a comment on the channel as well. So without further ado, surrounded by the ladies. <laughs> now you're intrigued, aren't you? Uh, in his beautiful studio in South Florida, woman sunny South Florida. Join me in welcoming. Put your hands together for Ricky Medlock. Join us here. Hey, Ricky. Uh, welcome, right. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jim, how are you, buddy? Wow, I am. A, doing... I don't. I don't even know with an intro like that. I might go ahead and leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody says. I know. It's like. <laughs> well, I've never I had an intro like that. Oh wow. Wow. Hey, that's uh, that's what I do, and uh, it's well earned, my friend. It is absolutely well earned. You've been doing this for a long time, and and, and tell us, you know. Was this something that you dreamed of when you were a kid? Were you the kid that was, you know, I often use this as a reference, you know, taking the pots and pans out of your mom's kitchen and just banging things around and always, you know, trying to create music and passionate and enthusiastic as a kid. Tell us about what sort of inspired you early on. I know you have family, especially your your grandparents who are very, very important to you and great sources of inspiration. Of course, Shorty Medlock, an incredible person with his own phenomenal background, which we'll touch on as well. You were surrounded by music and influences early on, weren't you, my friend? Well, as it happens, um, you start with my, my grandparents, uh, Shorty and my grandmother, Nita. Uh, one eater, and they adopted me and raised me when I was a very small infant. Uh, they took on the responsibility of me. Uh, my granddad, Shorty, he was already on the road touring with quite a few of infamous people at the time as a road guy. And uh, you know what? That was the that was what I was raised in. Uh, I was raised in this music family. Uh, my actual biological mother, my mother, she was a great singer. Uh, you know, I've had siblings that have been really good musicians of their own right. Um, when I came into it, it was interesting because my granddaddy saw it very, very early in me. I think he was the guy that really, uh, and I've always said this, um, I owe him everything. I mean, he was the guy that saw the, you know, what uh, God had given me as a God gifted talent. And, uh, you know, and, and had, and never let me falter and never stopped me from expanding on it. Um, when I was three years old, he bought me a miniature banjo and he started teaching me how to play it. And I've got pictures right now of me and of he and I playing together. Uh, and when he would come home from the road, he would go to this guy, this, this guy had a TV show called the Toby Dowdy show. Yeah. And it was a, it was a country music show that originated from Jacksonville on WMBR, which is now uh, the local station in Jacksonville is called WJXT. Channel well, four. Yep. Channel four. So what happened was he went to Toby one time and he said, look, 
I've been teaching my son how to play a miniature banjo. And he said, we worked up a couple of songs and I'd like to bring him on the show. I think it would be a really good novelty act uh, that here's a, you know, here's a grandfather and his grandson playing on live TV. And so Toby said, Hey, let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. I went on there at the age of three. I went all the way through to the age of eight years old. Wow. Um, the very, from the very first time I was accepted by, you know, all the people that watched the show, they thought it was very cool. And, uh, I got to meet a lot of great people on that show. Uh, Toby would have infamous people from back in the fifties come on the show. Um, he had, uh, the original Lassie was on the show. Oh yeah. And, um, uh, he had Roy Rogers was on the show with wow. trigger. But my favorite one was, uh, one time he brought Clayton Moore as the Lone Ranger came on the show, uh, with silver. And, um, I actually, as a young kid, he hoisted me up and sat me on his back and uh, kind of rode me around a little bit, holding onto the reins and stuff, you know. Um, and that made me feel like a very special kid back then. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But um, that's that's the whole thing in music. That's how I got started. And my biggest influence was my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather, you know, he played everything. And not only did he play uh, all kind of different instruments, but he played them great. Um, and that's what gave him the jobs that he ended up getting because he did play music so well and the instrument so well. So, you know, he turned me loose uh, playing banjo. Then all of a sudden I wanted to play guitar. And um, he had a guy in his band uh, that played a left-handed guitar. And his name was Dean O'Neill. And Dean O'Neill, I, I really kind of got hooked on watching this guy play. And um, I wanted to play guitar. And so my grandfather sat me down and uh, gave me his old acoustic guitar to hold in my lap. And I thought that was the biggest guitar I'd ever seen in my whole life. Oh, yeah. But to a small kid, <laughs> yeah. it's a huge guitar, you know. But he showed me G, C, and D on the guitar. And he looked at me and he goes, okay, now you're on your own. You go learn it yourself. Well, wow. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden, Dean uh, was kind of the catalyst in me learning other chords and other stuff. Yeah. And uh, so here I am today. I mean, learned to play guitar at five years old, and here I am, 72 now, and I'm still playing guitar. And I just, you know what it is, too, Jim? Music has always been a real passion for me. Yeah. I, you know, I, I got into this business, you know, and a lot of people go, ah, I think he's bull, bull crapping us. But, you know, I got into this business because of the love of music. Yes. Uh, my folks love music. Uh, they were into it because of that. And um, you know what? I got into it because I love the art of music. I didn't get into it to be, you know, a rock star. I got knocked off there a little bit. He's there's some really tough weather that's go, going through yep. Florida. You, you're there. <laughs> yeah. You went into the black hole. <laughs> pits. I know, man. I'm, are you still with me? Oh yeah, yeah. We we got the audio. Um, are the storms still coming through South Florida? Yeah, they're. Oh yeah, they're still rolling through. Florida and tell. storms is uh, like I'm, peanut butter I'm and frozen. jelly. I'm frozen on. I'm frozen on the video. <laughs> <laughs> but on our end, it's just a black screen. So it's like oh, no. we're, we're talking to a mystery guest. Is oh, it really God. Ricky or is it somebody <laughs> posing as Ricky? I am so sorry, man. No, no, no. Just, you uh, may, it'll probably come back or it'll, you know, it'll Mother reboot Nature. or. <laughs> I, I didn't do nothing today to cause Mother Nature to be angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, you know pay your I mean? light bill? Did you pay your Wi Fi bill? Oh, yeah, I paid it. I paid it. <laughs> but uh anyway oh man i hate that i'm frozen 
So on this end, yeah, on this end, it just is a black screen. So fortunately, we're not seeing like a wacky facial expression, which usually when you're frozen, you get frozen with your mouth open. And it's like one of the worst shots you could ever have. (laughs) Right, right. But uh, do you have to... uh, do you have to back out and come back in? You think maybe something triggered the video thrown off because we got the audio. So maybe you got to come back out and then come uh, back in. Maybe come maybe back out. we'll see. Um, come back out of the studio. Come back in. Here we go. Cam- I see a little. <laughs> Let me see cam- if I can get the camera back. We'll look back at some shots going. along the way, right? Yeah, man. Hold on a second. Let me see if I yeah, can. Do yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't it crazy? You're on some of the biggest stages in the world with all this technology and lighting and equipment and everything else. And something yeah, as simple as a Wi-Fi can sort of. <laughs> I know it's, it's terrible. It's, a... it's really terrible. I know. Well, you and I were saying, you know, there was nothing wrong with having the phone attached to the kitchen wall. <laughs> that was still good. We're taking yes. a look at some photos while he's, uh, so yeah, so we still got the audio, which is good, and uh, this is cool. Yeah, everybody's commenting. Uh, inside the song says you've entered the black hole, <laughs> 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 and we have folks watching from uh, Alejandro is watching from Argentina. Greetings oh from God. Argentina. I love Southern rock, uh, especially Leonard Skinner. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool stuff. That is and, so cool, man. Uh, yeah. They're all commenting. So cool. We're just taking a look at some of them while we, uh, while you sort of get uh, things yeah, hooked I'll up get there. Us, I'll get us back one way or the other. I'll get us back. We got a report in from one of our lovely viewers here on the Gym Master Show up in Ontario, Canada. It's the same thing. Heavy storms to the north, heavy storms to the south. Yes. <laughs> I, I think I'm staying put in the northeast here where I am. <laughs> We're here in the New York area, between New York and Boston, along the southern New England coast in the New York area. Right. And uh, we're good. But we got like 100 degree heat coming here tomorrow. Yeah. I think that I'm going to have to get out and come back in. Somehow. Hang right there. Let me relaunch and I'll be right back. You do a relaunch. (laughs) So he just relaunched. I'll take a look at a couple of photos here. This goes back too. he hasn't seen these yet because he's relaunching. But we really put together a fantastic array of cool photos here. He's very, very proud of his Native American heritage as well. We'll talk about that. Cool. There he is. All right. Let's bring him back in. So sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a matter of exiting and then slowly and relaunching. Back in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's boy. it. Yeah. You're what? Uh, you're on the other side of the coast from Cape. Uh, Canaveral, right? So well, it's all about yeah, the I'm launch. On a, I'm, I'm on the West Coast. I love the West Coast of Florida because I'm I'm really big into fishing. And um, this is a beautiful area to be a fisherman. Trust me. I've never been a hunter. Uh, yeah. I'm, not, yes. I'm not a guy that, uh, I'm not a guy. I will tell you, I am yeah. a, um, I'm a gun, uh, a weapons uh, uh, guy. You know, I love to. Aficionado. Aficionado, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I've never been. And you live hunter. on a canal too, right? I, you have the boat sort of on a canal. I mean, you. Actually, I live, actually, I live right on the water. You do live on and, the water. Um, yeah, I live on the water. And you know what? I, I can go. And this is so funny, man. You will find this interesting. Um, when the pandemic hit, um, you know, we were all locked down and uh, nothing, you know, that we all our shows had fallen out. I think we had 65 shows uh, that fell out and, and we were done. Well, what was cool was is that I was separated at the time from all my members of my family. Yeah. Um, I was all by myself in this house. Uh, so all I had was was music, uh, my ladies here in the studio, um, and the boat. Mm. And I, and I spent a lot of time yeah. on a deserted river. I mean, it was the eeriest thing. You'd go out on the river and to go out to the Gulf and it was just nobody. Yeah. And it was just really weird. But you know what? Uh, between 
uh, staying in touch uh, with everybody, my my loved one uh, on FaceTime, <laughs> and uh, being on the water and having the ladies and the music in the studio here, that kept me sane, you know what I mean? Absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, you did get hit with that dreaded COVID. Yes. You did get hit with that, huh? How did, and But you made it through. Well, check this out. So, like, not a lot of people know this uh, about me, but uh, I have one lung, and I have a uh, compromised respiratory illness. Basically, you could say it's pulmonary fibrosis. And um, I've been going. I've gone through this since I was a very young, uh, young kid. Um, so, what was really weird was when this whole thing happened, this pandemic. All my family, uh, they did not want me to make a move to do nothing. Uh, my management, uh, the guys in the band, uh, you know, everybody, they, they said, you know, you can't, you can't make a move. So I locked my, you know, I was locked down here in the house and, uh, you know, had to cancel some shows, put them on hold for a while. Well, this is, this is before I got the COVID. Um, before, yeah. I was locked down. Uh, I didn't have no pets, but I'll tell you what was really interesting. I had out of nowhere. Do you know what an iguana is? Do you know what? Oh, an sure. Is? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, I had two iguanas take up residencies in the back at out back. Did you really? And I, and I would feed them every day, and they 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 hung with me through the whole thing. And now they're out there and they've grown up really big. So, and they're still there. So they so, are pretty much your, they're like your they, German shepherds. They're the yeah, guard dogs. They're, they're, they're my dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Did you but, name uh, them? Well, you know what? I call them everything under the sun, you know, <laughs> Hey, greenback, you know what hey, I mean? But, greenback, right. but, uh, here's what happened. Um, we started going out and playing and I believe I was in Mississippi uh at my my other half you know we were at the house up there have a lake home up there yeah and i believe when i traveled back next time we do this we're going to do this from either where you are there or we're going to do it from yeah. the lake home <laughs> yeah but when i traveled back i believe that's where i contracted it yeah and yeah. uh yeah. boy it shut me down man but it scared it scared everybody, you know, because they knew what was going on with me. With the lung but situation, I, yeah. Yeah, but I have a brilliant doctor. Um, I have a brilliant doctor down in Naples. And fortunately, I qualified for the monoclonal treatment. And uh, that monoclonal treatment, they gave it to me. Uh, and it brought me out of it within 24 hours. Wow. I was, so, I was, on, I was on the mend. So You were really, yeah. I was really lucky. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Are there any lingering effects or? Um, I mean, you only called me Ted twice, but I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm only a dumbass once. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I, I don't, you know, I don't think I got it unless this Twitch is part of it, but you know. Right. But, but uh, I did have, I did have periods where I was very, very tired. And uh, Johnny even had it. Mm, uh, yeah. We've had several of the guys in the band. Uh, Peter Keys, our keyboard player. Yeah. Uh, Damon, who's standing in for Gary right now. Mm -hmm. He ended up, he got it. Wow. I just understand that Sparky got it mm. while we've been off. While you've been away, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, wow, man. You sure. know? So you were in several incarnations of bands through the years, too, before... Blackfoot before Leonard Skinner, right? Tell us Correct. about some of that coming up the ranks. Well, you know what? I, I played in, uh, actually, I played in my my granddaddy's band, uh, bands yeah. as a, when I learned how to play drums. I took up playing drums when I was like eight years old. And so he needed a drummer in his band. So when I was about 11, 12 years old, I was playing drums in his band. You know, wow. I had a band, a band one time called, the miracle sounds 
and we did all R and B stuff like James Brown and yes. Sam and Dave. I remember and that. Yes, <laughs> I, I saw something on that. That's it was cool. Yeah, huh? yeah, did yeah, you yeah. enjoy that? Oh, I loved it. We had uh, we had like three, four horns in the band, and yeah, yeah. You know, I was just knocked out back then. I'd been to see James Brown several times at the old Jacksonville Coliseum. And uh, I was just knocked out with all that. You know, I loved James. I love all that stuff. Did you ever but, meet uh, um, Holly Farris, no. his trumpet player? No. He's been but with I, him for years, and he's with still with the James Brown band. They still tour. And it was right. a situation where he was, because he was a guest on the show, and he told this fantastic story about how he was playing, you know, when he was younger, uh, 20s maybe and he's playing yeah. i think in a bar or what have you in a, the atlanta area and james brown just happens to come in to scope out the place or what have you and he see he says like who is this guy on stage who is this guy this unbelievable trumpet player right and it was holly and scooped them up and the rest is history sometimes things like that happen huh well i did meet i did meet one of his horn players maceo I met him. He was one of the sax guys. And uh, what what a sweetheart of a guy, man. I mean, stood and talked to me for a long time. And I enjoyed that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of cool, man, because a lot in Leonard Skinner in the early years. Uh, I I'll give you a great interesting story. I was playing a club in, in Macon, Georgia, of all places. And we're in there playing one night. And all of a sudden this guy walks in and he walked up to the stage and wanted to jam with the band. And it was none other than Dr. John. And Dr. John came in, wow. sat down on, sat down on the keyboard, Billy's keyboard. Yeah. And uh, the next thing you know, we're playing with Dr. John. Wow. I, it was like, yeah, it was so cool. It was so very cool. You know? Yeah. Great experiences. So did you know that you wanted to stick with music? Was music something that was in your blood and you just, you had this, did you have a razor sharp focus that you wanted to stick with and go forward? Or were there oh, yeah. lots of different nooks and crannies uh, along the way? Well, you know, as anybody will tell you, you know, when you decide you're going to play music as a career. Got to be all in. Uh, it's like a, lo a roll of the dice. You know, uh, you either got to you and you got to love it. Yeah. And sacrifice a lot for it because I did sacrifice a lot for it. Right. Uh, but you know what? Um, I knew that at some point in my life, probably I was going to end up doing something that I didn't know to what extent. Yeah. But I, I go all the way back right now. I, I think about it. Yeah. Now go all the way back to 1956 when I was six years old. My parents took me to see Elvis mm. at the Florida theater. Yeah. He was there for two nights and they ended up getting tickets uh, through a person of, that we knew. Um, her name was May Axton and May Axton and Tommy Durden and one other guy were the writers of Heartbreak Hotel that Elvis ended up doing. They they actually met with him and, uh, you know, he ended up doing the song. Um, we got the tickets. My parents got the tickets from May. And uh, we ended up going down to the Florida Theater. And I ended up seeing uh, the king when the king was really the king. And um, What was that experience like for you at that well, time? Well, here's, here's what was funny. So I am just like, you yeah. know, I'm sitting there as a kid and I can yeah. honestly today, I can really kind of remember it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was really interesting was we left the theater. I'm looking at all these people just screaming over the sky and like freaking out, you know, Yeah. but yeah. We, we left the theater and we go and get my mom, dad's car. Mm -hmm. and we're driving home. And I remember my dad looking over at me going, well, son, what do you, what'd you think of that? And I said, at that moment, I said, that's what I want to do. And I never, I, I never stopped trying to do it. Um, I played in all kinds of bands. I played in 
uh, my my first band, you know, called the Rock and Aces. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that was my first band. Uh, I played in a band called the Candied Apple. Uh, just uh, I played in a band called Fresh Garbage. That's and out right. Of fresh, yeah. Out of Fresh Garbage was another band, uh, Tangerine, that we formed the group Blackfoot out of. So I would played in all kinds of bands, man, and, and been around some great musicians, you know. Um, Ronnie and Gary and Alan, Larry Johnstrom, you know, and Bob at that time, they were the 1%. We were around them quite a lot down at, you know, at some of these clubs uh, that we played at in Jacksonville. And um, everybody just kind of was around one another, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's what led... Uh, for me being, you know, a drummer in Fresh Garbage, uh, that's what kind of led uh, the guys to really think of me to bring me in as a drummer mm, uh, right. at the time, you know, when Bob left. Right. So I got to tell you, it's so weird how this business is because it gets smaller every day. Sure does. You know, the, I mean, the people you meet maybe 10 years ago, you run across all over a sudden again. And uh, maybe you're in a band with them. You don't know. But I decided at a very young age that that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And when it came time, uh, when I left Leonard Skinner the first time, uh, that was a, naturally, that was a very uh, difficult decision. Uh, but you know what? I, I was kind of honest. I was trying to be honest with myself and honest with the guys. Uh, because of my uh, condition, I didn't have, I didn't think I had the stamina enough to be a great drummer for them. I thought that they needed somebody better. Mm. Uh, Ronnie, Gary, and Alan, they loved uh, my feel. They said, you got a great just rock and roll, like a swing to it, man. They said, You're, it's just perfect for us, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I really felt like they needed somebody better well in the midst of it all bob wanted to come back so we played for a while with two drummers uh it was bob and me right and um uh, so then after a while you know they had bob back and i decided i said you know what um i just i need to i need to go and looking back on it might have been kind of cool if i'd have been the third guitar player back then but Fast forward, and in uh, 96, I get back with Skinner, and uh, we're over in England. We're over in Europe, uh, touring our first time with me back in the band, and I had had my experiences in Europe. Blackfoot became a real prominent force in Europe, you know, when we were at our height. Mm. Well, <laughs> we're over there. And we, I remember we played London that night and uh, we got on the bus to go. I forget where it was we were going anyway. I think it, we were close to coming home. But we got on the bus that night and, and over in England, they had those double decker tour oh, buses. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember it was Gary and Dale and myself sitting up front. And I remember Gary looking over at me. And he hit me on the arm, you know, he punched me over here and he says, where were you that night? And I went, uh, well, what are you talking about, Gary? He goes, where were you, uh, you know, that night? And then all of a sudden I figured out what he was talking about. Right. And, um, I said, I'll tell you what's really odd, Gary. Um, you guys had just left Greenville, South Carolina. I had just come into Columbia, South Carolina to play a gig. And that's how close fate was. And um, I told Gary, I said, you know, Gary, I said, I always believed that maybe had I stayed, um, maybe I could have said something or done something to change uh, the minds of everybody wanting to, uh, you know, go that day. And um, it was interestingly enough, he said to me, um, no, 
He said, Ricky, you weren't supposed to be there then. You were supposed to be here now. And uh, that's been over 26 years ago, you know. And we're talking, of course, about the uh, the plane crash uh, that I remember. Uh, we were in a movie theater, actually. We were I forget the movie we were watching. I don't know if mm -hmm. it was... Raiders of Lost Ark or some movie. I forget what it was, but it was something, you know, like an iconic movie. And believe it or not, they actually, during the movie, I don't know how they did it. It was almost as if the president, something happened to the president of the United States. They actually put like a scroll across the bottom of the movie uh, announcing what had happened you know that there was this plane crash leonard skinner the group and uh and everybody was it was like a total state of uh shock and and whether people were super fans of the group or not just the fact that you know these are people these are lives they're making music they're you know having a good time and everything and uh for you i know that's it's and for the rest it's a profound situation and uh how did that experience change you in any way in terms of how you look at life how you approach life when something out of the blue i mean um yeah buddy holly reba mcintyre had experienced that with her bandmates you know the disappearing in the car the uh Playing yeah. well, you know, these things happen. Uh, how, what are some things that left you with in terms of how you look at life as a result of something so, you know, unpredictable and tragic happening in that? Well, first of all, um, you know, Ronnie and Gary and Alan, they, they really love listening to my old man play the blues and, they would come over to our porch and sit on the porch with us, with uh, with him. And we would sit there and listen to him play Milk Cow Blues and all these blues songs, you know. And Ronnie really loved that. And uh, my old man played a dobro and played, uh, you know, of course, he played the guitar and the banjo and the fiddle and all that and blow the harmonica and all that. And um, But uh, what was really interesting was is that, uh, I was in Jacksonville and I had come to Jacksonville to uh, see my parents, you know, and uh, Blackfoot was going. And um, so I'd come there and Ronnie uh, invited uh, us over to, they had a studio in Riverside and uh, Ronnie invited us. He said, uh, come over. I'd love to see, see Shorty, you know, and um, so I, I took my I took my dad over there, and um, we went in the studio. We were there. Ronnie came in in his little Mercedes, and um, he loved he give my old man a hug and loved seeing him. He said, "Shorty, it's so good to see you." And uh, so we went in, and um, he got him to play us a, a cut off the off the new record. Yeah. And um, so listen to it and. It was great, you know. I think they played that smell and it was just really, really good, you know. The but I noticed my old man was just kind of like just kind of quiet and you know, just listening and looking and everything. And so we went to leave and Ronnie just mentioned to me, um, hey Ricky, we got our own plane. Wanna come ride with us for a few days or you know, stay, you know, ride with us on, on three or four gigs or whatever. And I thought that would be a great idea, you know, mm -hmm. but then as it happened, um, a couple of days before Blackfoot ended up getting shows, uh, I couldn't go, you know, and, um, I look at that now and I think to myself, Gary was absolutely right. Uh, it wasn't meant for me to be there then it was meant for me to be here now. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I know that, uh, you know, it's a subject people love to bring up. They, I think it's going to be a subject that people always loves to bring up and, and yeah. talk about, you know, yeah. for us, 
it's a it's the real uh, deal yeah for us it's the real deal and it's a, a subject pretty well much we could do without anymore you know what i mean right exactly. um it took it took it's painful it took, yep it took brothers it took friends um you know and, it, and it's like you know i put myself in johnny's place you know and gary's you know here this is johnny's oldest brother you know gone in a, in a like that and right. um right gary gary's best friend i mean like his brother too yeah and gone like that i mean yeah. uh and i and i looked at it and when i found out about it we were playing that night of course uh you know they're in columbia south carolina and I, some guy came up on the side of the stage and said hey man didn't you used to play in leonard Skinner?" and i was like yeah oh your buddies just had a plane crash and i was like i looked at i think a crew guy was down i said get this guy out of here man What's you know? this, yeah. well and uh right after the show uh one of our crew guys says ricky it's it's true well i rushed back to the hotel because i knew my mom and dad they were in jacksonville and i knew i mean my mom and dad loved the guys you know oh yeah and i knew that you know they would have already heard you know and i've dialed my parents phone number uh on the old rotary dial phone you know in the hotel yeah. and it didn't even ring one time and it, my dad picked it, it up just grabs it yeah and i said pop please tell me this is not you know and he goes it's true and hmm. he started telling me who had perished and you know i was just it broke my heart i mean you know but you know what man uh when i came back with the guys um you know i promised gary and johnny but i promised gary since he was bringing me back that i would be with him till the last note and free bird was struck and that's been over 26 years ago and here i am you know Isn't that, you're a man of your word that is so <laughs> fantastic i tell you really you know um what were some of the, when you look back at uh, the times with the group, what were some of the moments that were, you know, the happy moments, the really cool moments, <laughs> the, the, the things where you look back and you're like, boy, that was really, that was fantastic. That happened there in that city. Yeah, or, yeah. Tell us about a few of those. Cause I know you got a lot of great stories and memories with that. Oh yeah. I, you know, I'll tell you what was really, really cool. The times that we were at, uh, Hell House, you know, rehearsing and writing songs. I used to love to watch Ronnie, uh, how he wrote songs. I mean, it was it was so interesting to me. He, you know, it, it, it was all in his head. He put it all up here, yeah. and he wrote the song. He wrote the songs in his head, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, there was a statement from him, uh, you know that people know about but he he said you know anything worth any song worth singing is not worth you know you don't have to write it down you know mm -hmm. it's in your it's in your head but uh the guy to me i and i've said this before in interviews he was this guy was a real southern poet he knew how to put into words at such a young age as he was he knew how to put into words that people could get next to and relate to in such a class way. Right. And I mean, I put him up there, man. Let me tell you, I, you know, not because I play in the band and, and, and he was my friend and, you know, I worked with him and stuff, but uh, if, if I'd have never known him, I would still look at him and go, you know what? He's one of the great songwriters of our age. Um, I, I put him right up there with Bob Seger. Mm, Bob yeah. Seger's another, and, and here's the way I explain it to people. People go, okay, Ricky, explain it to us. Okay, I'll explain it to you. When a painter, when an artist sits down with a with on a canvas, and he paints a picture, he brings that picture to life. Well, I look at great songwriters like. They sit down like an artist sitting down in the easel. They sit down, they write a song, and you can see the image in your head. 
And that is a great songwriter because they turn the image into words and the words put the image in your head, you know? Isn't that a cool thing? I've actually had a couple of uh, people on the show that have described it that way. Some people, and it's really amazing. There's a whole thing that you can do a whole study on it. Some people see images, things, and some people see color. They see music as <laughs> color. How yeah. about you? Do you see music in these ways as well, Ricky? Um. I do. I, I do. I see I see uh, music as a beautiful thing. It, it's a beauty within. Uh, it's an expression. Uh, it, it, it's your it's your thoughts. Uh, it's either your happiness or your fears. Uh, it's your blues, uh, whether it be good or bad, happy or sad. Music to me is an inner self. Uh, and, and, and the music comes out and it's an expression. You're expressing what you feel at that moment right? or you see at that moment, you know, right. um, I've been fortunate in my life to have played with some of the, I think this is just me, but I've been very fortunate to have played with some of the world's best musicians, uh, stood on stage with them and and stood next to him and played hmm. and uh you know what man i i really feel blessed and fortunate yeah uh to have done that that i'm sitting here today and i feel really incredible i feel uh so so incredibly fortunate that i was called back into a band uh that uh, when, when i got back into the band i thought about it and i went Wow, you know, uh, Ronnie never got a chance to go forward and to really see exactly what would have developed out of him. I mean, I can only imagine, uh, imagine it, you know, who knows? It's just like trying to imagine what would Hendrix have done? What would, what would he have become? You know what I mean? Do you, but, uh... I, but I also, but I also believe and I know this is going to sound uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it sounds spiritual. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe hey, throw I, it hope at people, us. Yeah. I hope people doesn't get offended to this, you know. But I believe that you're put here on this earth, okay, and, you're, and your life is mapped out. And those that have been taken uh, from us at a, such a young age, they came into this life. And they made such an impact on the world. Yeah. And in music, especially. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they were and then they were gone. Right. And just, um, just like that, yeah. It's interesting. I, I believe that I ha I hate to say that too, but I believe that Ronnie was one of them, you know. But um we're all the better off for him. Uh, having <laughs> having known him and having been around him and and playing Man. such great tunes and i feel the same way about uh alan collins yeah um alan and i were friends and i respected him as a guitar player i thought he was one of the most underrated guitar players at that time um he created stuff that's just still just beautiful today and uh you know when i came into the band you know people they threw it out there. Oh, Ricky's trying to be Alan Collins, and you know, it's you know, I, I heard it. I heard it all. And what I did was when I came back in, I told Gary. Gary got me in. He says you're the closest thing to Alan that I can get. Wow. And um, he said, uh, the energy. Uh, you both have a similar style. Yeah. Uh, ironically, you both play the same kind of guitar. So I, I came back in, I said, I love the guy, you know, and I respected him. So Gary, when I come back in there, I'll, I'll play what Alan played in those original songs. And I said, that's the way I honor him each and every night. You know, I might put a little twist on it here and there, you know, in the songs, but everybody does. That's your, that's what you do. It's your own style. 
But um, you know what, man? I, I loved and respected the guy, and I still respect him today and, and honor his memory as best I can, you know? Do you feel, and, uh, you know, did the others, did you feel at all this, and sometimes it could be self-imposed weight that you had after everything happened to want to continue to get it right as you guys always had to continue sort of the legacy of the group in honor of the guys uh, who were no longer was there that feeling like, okay, you know, we really got to, um, you know, it's almost like a self-imposed burden you put on yourself to want to make sure that everything, the legacy, the music, it's all intact and you're moving forward. Well, um, you know, at the time that I came back, um, the guys had been kind of like, uh, trying to trying to test the waters as i guess you should say in country music in the country music field because country music was taking off taking off as more of a kind of an up you know rock kind of a rock thing country rock thing or americana right. yeah it was yeah <laughs> and um <clears throat> pardon me when i came back the first thing that gary said to me he said ricky I want the band to rock again. And, um, and I had told him already, you know, on the phone, Gary, I know you guys have been trying to, you know, get into the country music field. And I said, if you're looking for a guy, you know, that's a country player, that's far from me. I, I'm just, I'm not your guy. He goes, no, I want the band to rock again. Right. Well, he got Huey Thomason, you know, gear, uh, Johnny brought Huey in. Gary brought me in, and from that moment on, it took off. I mean, it it turned into a force, and uh, it's been a force ever since. Um, you know what? I go out there every night, and I give it 110% of everything I am. And uh, that's the way I've always been. And when I'm you're on stage and you're doing that, What's happening to you? What you are you transported to another time and place? I mean, all cylinders firing. You're going 120 percent. What, what's actually? Because you know, if people have not seen you guys in concert, you really. Right. I mean, you are all in. You're gonna get a show. <laughs> you're oh, gonna yeah. get. A, you're gonna get a full on show. And you guys, by the time you're done, you're sweating and it's just like, you're really, but what's happening to you? What is that feeling like when you're on stage and, and it's thousands of people there or whatever, and you're doing your thing and, you know, they're responding, they're loving the music. What's that feeling like for you? It's probably even hard to put in words. Well, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. It's probably um, that feeling, that energy. Uh, there's no drug that matches it. Right. Uh, there's there's no high that matches it. It's right. it, it's just I can't even describe what the feeling is other than um, the the energy level is unbelievable. Yeah. And um, what I love is the fact that it carries me. It does kind of carry me to a different to a different place. Um, I love, uh, I, I, I love the, the energy that I can put out for the audience, uh, for the fans. And I love how it drains me. I mean, it drains me, uh, all the energy, my, my adrenaline is flying 90 miles an hour. And, uh, all of a sudden I'm like in this whole world that as soon as Freebird is over, I, I, all of a sudden I come out of it and I go, wow, was, uh, how was that? You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I get lost. In, I get so lost in the moment of it. Yeah. And I'm like, was that good? You know? <laughs> but, and then I, I take my cue from the audience, you know, the audience is going nuts and Johnny comes out and, you know, carrying the American flag, man. And we're all standing in the front 
waving at everybody and, and hoping at that moment, I'm hoping that everybody that ended up, you know, coming to see us and paying their hard earned dollars and, and, uh, you know, to get there. And I hope we gave them, you know, uh, I hope we gave them exactly what they wanted, you know? And, uh, that's what, that's what bums me out when we get rained out or we get canceled out or, you know, we get the stupid COVID and COVID and, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden we have to cancel the show. And right. I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'll tell you something, man, I, I'm always going to play. There's not going to be a time when Ricky's not going to, you know, play music. Uh, yeah. I saw, you know, and I go to this all the time. I tell this to everybody that I do a show with or interview with. You know, not too many years ago, uh, a journalist mm -hmm. uh, did a journalist. She did this interview with Merle Haggard. And she asked him, you know, uh, Mr. Haggard, you know, you go out here every year and you play and, you know, we know you probably don't need to do it, but you know, you go out here at your age and you play and you know, why is wh why do you do that? And he was so cool, man. He said, honey, he said, let me tell you something. The reason why I do this is because this is what I do. I play music and that's all I've ever done. That's what I love. And you know what? He's right. That's the way I feel. This is what I do. Right. Uh, you know, when the band is off for months at a time, I go stir crazy, man. Dude. I mean, there. You know what? I love to fish. Yeah. But there ain't enough fishing in the world to take place <laughs> for that. That's <laughs> not gonna. You know? Yeah, that's not gonna. Yeah. That lasts uh, for know? a while, and then all of a sudden, right. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm so excited right now that, you know, I'm leaving day after tomorrow. Uh, to go play Billings and Sturgis, I can't stand it. You know what I mean? That's cool. And so, you know, all I'm praying for is no storms in Sturgis. No That's storms what... in Sturgis. <laughs> yes. Does that not sound like a song? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Write that I... down. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> Always inspired, especially when you're live. <laughs> Tell us about, again, This you co-founded this. So this is really you know, your baby, um, Blackfoot, when you wanted to create something like Blackfoot, what was the vision? What was the mission for the group? What did you have, you know, in mind that you were thinking about? Well, cause everybody loves them too. Well, you know what, man, we, um, we started out as actually five guys. Mm -hmm. We had a keyboard player. We were formed out of two different bands. Uh, Jack, uh, who you see right there is to my right, which would be to your left uh, on the very end, Jack and a keyboard player named DeWitt Gibbs. They had a band with a guitar player called Tangerine. Oh yeah. Um, me, uh, myself, Charlie there in the picture and Greg, we had a band with a keyboard player called Fresh Garbage. And it was named, we named the band after the old spirit, the band Spirit. We love them, so we called our band that, you know. Um, we decided that we were kind of wasting everything, so we got rid of our keyboard player. They got rid of their guitar player, Tangerine did, and we merged together. And... Um, so after we moved up to New York, we ended up moving up to New York City at the invitation of a young woman that worked for a record company. Mm -hmm. She worked for Bell Records, which was a subsidiary of Columbia Records. Right. So we moved up there. We scuffled. We, you know, starved. We did the whole you know, I'm not going to go there. We just did the whole thing. You know what I mean? And um, DeWitt decided uh, that he had had enough of it. Uh, he came back to Jacksonville because his parents 
build a successful tire company and you know so he wouldn't have to worry about it but uh the other four of us uh greg jack charlie and myself we stayed well we went through several names but lo and behold one day jack said uh why don't we call the band blackfoot because several of us are native and uh myself and and jack and greg you know and why don't we call the band blackfoot and it stuck and we went to playing like that that was it yeah and um so in the midst of it all um things happened on a personal level uh between the management and um and jack and um i got really just i got to the point to where i just didn't want to deal with it anymore right um and the way the story goes and this is the way it happened i ended up getting a hold of alan collins and um i said alan i said it's ricky medlock he goes hey man he goes uh, uh what are you up to i said well i'm living up in new jersey and um uh, we were we were living right outside of princeton new jersey in the old governor's mansion oh wow um and two other bands lived there as well we all shared this big house and all, all three bands rehearsed in that house and you know so i said i'm really i, I want i want to get out of here um do you guys need a roadie right <clears throat> or right. do you need a somebody to drive the truck or yeah. whatever right yeah and alan said do you still play drums i said yeah he said you need to call ronnie hmm. so he gave me ronnie's number and i phoned ronnie yeah. right after yeah and uh ronnie answered the phone and um i said ronnie it's ricky medlock he goes hey man he goes uh what's going on i said well alan told me to call you and um i said um uh he he asked me if i still played drums and ronnie said well do you and i said yeah and um he said uh well as it happens um bob is leaving us he's quitting the band and in two weeks we got to be ready to record our first record in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And the record's being produced by Jimmy Johnson, David Hood. I was like, wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. He goes, when can you get here? I said, I'll sell off um, a couple of my amplifiers that I got here. I'll sell those. I'll bring my guitars with me and what little clothes I got. And, uh, Let's get to it. So I brushed up on my chops, you know, on the drums <laughs> for a couple of <laughs> days. And, uh, you know, it was different. But uh, they sent me an airplane ticket. And uh, I went into Newark, New Jersey. I had a ride to take me into Newark, drop me off at the airport. Uh, I flew to Jacksonville. Uh, Ronnie, Gary, and Alan met me at the airport uh, we took off and we went by my parents house and uh, of course ronnie got into a you know got into a discussion with my dad about the blues and you know music and all that stuff you know but um it was funny because we went left my parents home and went to the rehearsal place where larry johnstrom who was the original bass player of the band larry was living in the rehearsal house and we started rehearsing that night and doing all the material that would that we record would record in muscle shoals alabama that would become leonard skinner's first and last in fact we recorded some of the songs that became on the pronounced record so uh from that moment on man i loved it i mean it took off and uh i loved every minute of it you know yeah 
I mean, it's when you look back and you're like, holy cow. I mean, the timing and just being, you know, in these op, in these places and there's black. Well, look at that one. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, you know, that leads me that that leads me back. You and I were talking about it. Uh, it was meant to be when your life is mapped out like that. Yes. And all of a sudden it was meant for me to be there and make that call. And it, and everything kept going forward, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you. And then, you know, you, even today, you're mentoring Blackfoot, right? You're, you're helping them along. Tell us about that. That's kind of cool. Well, you know what? They're out playing on their own right now. Um, I, all I'm doing is, um, uh, I'm kind of waiting now they're in from what I understand, they're writing uh, some new material uh, that I'm supposed to hear pretty soon. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there, but they're, they're out playing gigs, man. And having a great time. There's the so original there. there. There's there the... they are. <laughs> cool shot, huh? Yeah, man. Well, if you look right there over my left shoulder is a guy named Ken Hensley. Yeah. Ken Hensley was a keyboard player we brought into the band. He played with Uriah Heep. He wrote a lot of those great Uriah Heep songs. And uh he was with us for a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You still have the jacket? No, man, that jacket, <laughs> I don't know what happened to that jacket. I think it I don't know. Somebody might have stolen it, or oh, what you know, you'd get, what you'd get for maybe, it today on eBay well, would be amazing. <laughs> well, back then it probably I was in a drunken stupor and gave it away to somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, just take you like the jacket, kid. Take it. Yeah, yeah. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, you're you're touring too. I mean, Leonard Skinner, like you say, is uh, continuing and touring. Yeah. And, and that's really exciting. I mean, especially getting over the hump of all the craziness that we've experienced mm -hmm. in the last uh, two, three years or so um, to be back out there and amongst people and to hear the roar of the crowd and all that. It's very hard to uh, recreate that without it being reality, right? You, you absolutely feed off the energy of an audience and of the other bandmates and then give it back tenfold. Well, I got to tell you what was really cool, man. Um, when we went back out uh, in 2021, um, it was so interesting that uh, our first show was a big festival uh, in Panama at Panama City Beach, all you know, right there by the water and everything. I think there was around, I don't know, 35, 40,000 people there. And what was so cool was Johnny walks out and uh, it was, I mean, after being off <laughs> for a year and a half, I was like, wow, you know, I was just itching. I was like, come on, you know? And the next thing you know, Johnny goes, how does it feel to have live music again? Yeah. And, oh, man. Yeah, You know, I yeah. mean, people went nuts, but you know what, man? Uh, my granddaddy used to tell me when he was a musician, <clears throat> you know, he lived through the depression. And he said to me, <clears throat> pardon me. He said to me, Ricky, I made, I made more money uh, in the depression during that time than hardly ever did in my in my life he goes when people are stuck they got the blues they uh, their woman left them or their man left them or they got no money they, they're you know they're having a hard time they gotta have entertainment yes he said entertainment will heal you yeah well you know what we felt that Music is healing. Yep. You know what, man? I wish the rest of this world would let music heal it. Because you know what? We probably have a damn fine world to live in. Absolutely. You know, right. 
I mean, honestly, you know, and, and I'm not going to get into this whole arena, but but if people would let music in their heart, we'd probably be a lot better off than we are now, Jim. Bring everybody you know I mean? together. Bring everybody Big together. Be because I'm telling you, I've played festivals of 180, 200,000 people before from all walks of life. And what happens? They all come together and they have a great time together. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, it is. That's what it's, 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 it's really unbelievable to me how all of a sudden all these people, they, they come together in the, in the celebration of music and they get along. They have a great time. Uh, there's no, I don't know. Everything is dropped. And it's yeah. just about the celebration of having a great time in music. And right. I just can't believe that, you know, it's it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that we couldn't do something like that in this world to make it better. But right. we can't. Right. I mean, it's just, it's so weird to me, man. It really yeah. is. Have you always thought that way? Has that been uh, something that Ricky has always thought about throughout his life, about wanting to bring yes. people together, inspire them, have a good time? and Of course. And yeah. come together. Yeah. And yeah, that's influenced because, the music, right? In a positive way. Well, if you think about something, man, you know, our time here on this world, on this earth it is very short. short. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So every day when you get up, when you open your eyes, you ought to go, Ooh, thank you for another day. I do. Yeah. You know, I right. do. And, and it's just that way with me. Uh, I, you know what? I got great bandmates. I got a great family. Um, and, and I've been, you know, I was gifted. Um, I got an, as my granddaddy told me one time, after he seen a show, after he seen me play one time, he said to me, he said, uh, you know what, son? He said, um, what you did out there tonight was, was really unbelievable. He goes, just always remember, you got an extra special kiss uh, from God when you came out of your mama's womb. And I think about that. And, what a uh, line, I, huh? Wow. Yeah, I, be, I believe that. Yes. I believe that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, yeah. Is it that a couple of people were asking, is there a book out or are you thinking about writing a book, sharing oh. stories, you know? Hey, you know, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I was telling my gal, you know, I said, I think this year I'm going to turn on uh, I'm here in my studio in my mix room. This is my mix room yeah, that we're us, in right now. Tell us about this fabulous room. Well, I have a, a Pro Tool set up here. And uh, this is where I, <clears throat> the Southern Native record, is where I mixed uh, this record. And um, I had a great time doing it. I'm panning around, as you can see. And uh, it was uh, it, it was fun. Uh, I have a great time in this room and uh, enjoy, uh, you know, I break out the ladies. Uh, there's one of them or several of them sitting over there, uh, my J200. And uh, you know what, man? Uh, this, is a, this is a great place to be held up in. It really is. But um, I, I said. It is a cool place. I love yeah, it. Yeah, man. Why would so you want to leave I, that? <laughs> so what I said, I uh, I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in uh, in the mix room, and I'm going to turn on. I'm going to bring up Pro Tools, put a track up, and I'm going to start with a live mic, and I'm just going to start from the beginning of my life yeah. telling stories. Yeah. And uh, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to really, to be, to be honest, instead of a regular, maybe instead of a book or whatever, you know, put it out as an audio book or, you mm -hmm. know, uh, yeah. something of that nature. You know, I, I mean, I understand why people write uh, books, you know, to maybe to clear the air or, you know, to tell all or whatever, to, yeah. you know, but I'm not, 
It's not your I'm style. Not a, it's not my thing to be a tell-all book. I mean, everybody knows, you know, I'll confess. I mean, I, you know, I did everything from A to Z. Uh, but you know what? I, I, I'm glad that I, uh, I'm glad I got out of it many, many, many years ago. Uh, here I am uh, talking to you and I'm 72. I wish somebody would tie my shoe. But anyway. <laughs> uh, and you even uh, dabbled in acting. You went went out to L.A. and oh, Hollywood yeah. and did the acting bit. Tell us about that. That's kind of a cool well, uh, little is, nugget. Really, well, I had all, you know, I, had, I, I was acting in high school in, uh, in stage, on stage plays, you know. And um, so it just kind of filtered around where I knew people and, and, and had connections. And I went out to Hollywood, you know, around the year 2000, 2001, uh, something like that. Stayed off and on for about five or six years. And I did some independent films. Um, uh, the first thing I did was with none other than William Shatner. Yeah. Um, I did a film with him called Groom Lake. Um, it was kind of a sci-fi thing. Um, I did, um, oh gosh, trying to remember all this stuff, you know, it's been so, been so long since I <laughs> visited it. But like <laughs> I said, I did a lot of auditions, uh, almost had the role in, you know, in training day, uh, did Zizek Road with Catherine Heigl and Tom Sizemore. Yeah. And, uh, I, I did quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. Um, did even you did some, I even did some modeling out there and you did yeah. uh, a couple of commercials. I was in a commercial for Levi's and, Were you? uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I uh, mean, would you do it again? Would you get back into the acting if they called? Well, you know what? Um, I, if it was the right thing for me, um, if it, if it fit me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would love to. I mean, I, it, it's a different, it's a different expression. Let's put it that way, you know? Yeah. But at the time that I left Hollywood, uh, I left Hollywood because um, I felt like that I was spinning my wheels. Yeah. And, and also, you know, there were certain types of people that, you know, you know, you do me a favor, I'll do you a favor, you know? Right. And I just didn't, that wasn't my thing. It's that not wasn't your my style. Game. Right. It was not my game. And um, I thought to myself, I'm in my room, my hotel room one day, and <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm going, I'm going, wow. What am I doing you here? Know, I went, I just went through all this today. I, I did a great read for this film. I should have that part. And I went, you know what? I play in one of the world's biggest bands. What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so at about, I don't know, <laughs> about three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, same day, right? I, I packed up my travel van. Uh, I had a beautiful, like, you know, conversion van. And I packed it up, man, and got it all ready. I went out, hit the interstate, went over to Interstate 40, and boom, I was gone. And heading, heading back east. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I you know what? I'd had enough, man. <laughs> that was that just you know, that just wasn't my thing. I mean, I, you know, I don't knock anybody else. Yeah, if that's your thing, man. Go for it, man. Make something right. of it, you know. Do it, right? But for, for but for Ricky Medlock, that wasn't my thing, man. Yeah. Who are some of the people that, you know, in music and otherwise that you've always admired over the years? Some of the other oh, wow. legendary people that inspired you and either you got a chance to meet them or just you've admired them. Who would some of those people be? Well, you know what, man? I, <laughs> I, I had been able to meet, you know, quite a few people and, and get next to, one of the most legendary guys that I, I'm glad that I ended up being friends with is Paul Rogers. And um, I met Paul over in, over in England. Uh, I ended up being friends with the guys, the original 
the guys in deep purple, you know, and um, ended up, listen, man, I ended up uh, being really good friends with the guys in ACDC. Uh, I admired those guys. I mean, there's been a lot, a lot of people I've been able to be next to and uh, and be friends with. Um, some people didn't treat me so well, but that's okay. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, man, uh, it's a thrill uh, when you when you meet somebody that you've admired, like I did with Paul Rogers. Yeah. And uh, the next thing you know, you know, you're friends with him and you're able to say hello to him and call him or, you know, whatever, you know. One of the biggest thrills I got was um, – we played, uh, you know, Skinner was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's right. <laughs> and that night we played uh, Alabama and Freebird. Mm. And this this was a great compliment to me. And, and probably other than Billy Gibbons telling me one time that I had, I had hands and a tone from a guitar as smooth as butter, you know? Wow. <laughs> Wow. But um, it was really interesting. We played Freebird. Yeah. Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, I, and I'm coming down off the stage. And uh, this person walks up to me. And they go, excuse me, Mr. Medlock. Um, there's somebody over here at the table that wants to meet you. Shake your hand. You know, da, 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 da. And I said, oh, really? Who? They went, just let us escort you over. Okay. And so I gave a guitar tech. Uh, my guitar and um, I started following the guy. Well, you know, we go out in the audience and (laughs) here sits Ozzy and the guys from black Sabbath. And all of a sudden I walked by this table and uh, the guy stands up at sting and he shook my hand and telling me how much he enjoyed it, you know, and uh, there's a guy really admired and uh, just thought was an incredible songwriter. But uh, we go over to the next table, and this guy stands up. And, I mean, he could have been, you know, he could have been a freaking basketball player. It's Brian May of Queen. And he goes, he said, thanks for coming over. Shakes my hand. I'm looking up at him. Now, I'm 6'2". I'm looking up at him. And you're looking up at him. (laughs) And um, he said, my daughter... Uh, has always been a, a Leonard Skinner fan, and she loves Freebird. He goes, mm-hmm. I would love to see the hands yeah, that, that played, played that ending solo. And I went, I said this to him, I went, uh-uh. I said, no. I went, I want to see the hands that created and played all that Queen stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And we, we laughed. Mutual and, respect uh, for one another's talent. Big, big time. Yeah. And out of that meeting, through a very special friend of mine who knew Brian, a guy named Paul Crook, but through Paul, but Brian gave me one of his guitars um, right out of his rack. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. And uh, I've got it sitting That's right incredible. in the room. You yeah, do? man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, That's incredible. It great. It's great. That's amazing. Uh, God. Now, you yeah. guys, whether it was through Leonard Skinner or Blackfoot, what are some of the cool places where you've toured, visited, you know, either the United States or around the world that are some right. of your favorites that you'd love to return to? Well, I, I got to tell you, you know, Skinner, uh, what, five years ago, I think it was in 20. Uh, 2015, 2016, something like that. Uh, yeah, I believe it was. Uh, you know, we went down to New Zealand, Australia. Yeah. And I fell yeah. in love with New Zealand. Yeah. And um, uh, I almost didn't want to come back. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's quite a place. But um, I enjoyed uh, being in South America. And um, Europe has always been a real special place for me because uh blackfoot had an incredible uh 
an incredible run in Europe, all over, you know, everywhere from uh, from Spain all the way up to, you know, the Scandinavian country, all the way, all yeah. the way up to Sweden, Finland and Finland, all that, Sweden, Norway. Finland, all, yeah. yeah. And um, I still have quite a lot of friends over there, uh, people I, that I love dearly as friends, uh, some great journalists, you know. Yeah. And um, I loved, I loved playing over there. I loved being there. And um, I don't know, man. Uh, I've, of all the places I've been, I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. I, I sit sometimes and I think about all the places I've been to, and uh, that I've visited. And um, you know what? It is is very special memories to me. Yes. And uh, you know, and it's something I can reflect on. Yeah. And, and have my whole life. You know what I mean? It's great. Uh, they want you back in Europe. I hear from them all the time. So they, <laughs> and she loves New Zealand. That is so oh. cool. Um, what about songwriting? Do you like songwriting? <clears throat> Other? Um, yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Songwriting is a, is, is a really, well, like we were talking about Ronnie while ago, it's a, it's a special expression, a special gift, you know. I've always done, I guess, well in songwriting when I've had a mutual partner that, uh, you know, we shared, uh, you know, the same kind of vibe uh, in songwriting that, that, that we could come together and formulate great lyrics and, you know, the whole bit. Um, Jack, you know, Jackson out of Blackfoot, we had that kind of camaraderie. Yeah. We were brothers. We grew up together. Uh, we ran the streets together. We rode in the back of a van together for millions of miles, and, or I should say tens of thousands of miles. And we made it together. We had hit records together. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that he's not here today. You know, he passed away yeah. quite a few years ago. <laughs> and um, we had a camaraderie together that we could write songs together that just really worked. Um, we've had that camaraderie together with uh, Gary and Johnny and I. Uh, and it takes... You know, when you look at, like, like, look at the Beatles, you know, I look at the Beatles. Here's two guys that could come together. One guy, Paul McCartney, to me, was more of a pop music guy. Mm -hmm. John Lennon was more of the rock music guy. Right. But you put them together and look what they did. Yeah. The magic. I mean, oh, my God. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. You know? Absolutely. But, um. I like the song, right? I love writing songs. In fact, yeah. uh, you know, there's been a couple of times I've sent licks and 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 uh, songs, the music part to other people. Like, for instance, uh, Charlie Starr of Blackberry Smoke. I've sent him a couple of things, you know, before, and he's expanded on it and wrote songs. And uh, I, I I love doing that. I you know. But right now at this stage of the game, uh, I would like to write more, yeah, uh, record more, uh, you know, put some recordings out and stuff like that. And like I like I told you, Jim, I'm always going to play music, my friend, and uh, that's 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 it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the key. I mean, it's in your it's in your heart and your soul. It's if you weren't doing this, what would be the other thing that? Uh ricky would have done if ricky didn't take the musical path in his life what is the other thing or a few other things that you really do actually like to do that could have possibly maybe never topped what you've done and you're continuing to do but close second you know it's so funny you're asking me this yeah because <laughs> i've been asked this before uh my gal and and my daughter and family, they're going to laugh if they're watching this show. But 
If I had not have been a rock musician, what I always wanted to do, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Um, if I'd have had the help, I had the grades in school. Um, if I'd have had the help, I would have loved to have gone on to join the military and, and probably either the Navy or the Air Force. And, but I would have loved to have been a fighter pilot. I think I would have flown a fighter plane like I play guitar. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have been ruthless. <laughs> you know what I mean? But well, I mean, um, as you're as you're spinning upside down, your hair would look the same. There it is. <laughs> it would be but, perfect. Um, yeah, it'd be perfect, bro. But you but know what, man? I could see you doing that. I could see with the passion and energy that you have. I just could see you doing that. Well, you know what? I, I think I would have made a good, I believe I'd have made a good, um, a good fighter pilot because I'm, um, I, you know, to push the boundaries. Yeah. You know, to push those boundaries and push the envelope like that is exciting for it's, me to think about. You right. know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, unbelievable to me. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, all of a sudden, here's a pencil, right? Yep. And this is a jet. This is a jet. You're sitting right up here on the nose of the pencil, and you got full control of this, you know, billion-dollar plane. And I mean, man, what an incredible honor that would be. You know what I mean? Um, yes. That's what I would have done, dude. That's it. That's cool. It's a great answer. You uh, yeah. you guys, you know, whether it's Leonard Skinner or Blackfoot, the accolades and the uh, adulation have been intense uh, awards and all kinds of things. And um, somebody had asked, too, if you had talked about uh, the recognition that came in Mississippi something exciting happened in oh, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Being honored in Mississippi. Well, Tell us about that. It's so, it's so incredible. <laughs> this is just really weird. So the little town that we visit, uh, Stacy and I visit, um, it's called Olive Branch. We up there seeing relatives in Memphis and, but, um, ended up knowing the, getting to know the mayor well the mayor <laughs> so interesting he came out to a show and um so he goes back and he knows the state representatives and all that stuff you know in jackson mississippi and lo and behold he gets a hold of me saying the next time that i'm in you know that i'm up that way the house uh the state house wants to honor me uh, for my contributions uh, in music uh, and that, you know, and everything because they had found out that my dad, you know, Shorty was a Mississippi Delta Blues guy and uh, they knew my connection through that. They knew my connection for visiting up there and just my contributions of music to, you know, uh, to the country. And um, I got the, I got honored at the state at the state house uh there in front of their congress and wow that was like really different for me i mean yeah i thought to myself wow this is uh this is really different this is an honor you know yeah. when when they bring you up and you do that and yeah i don't know man i just um i i can't even tell you things i can't even tell you the feeling that was uh, you know, to look out there from the podium and realize, you know, that I'm talking to people that, you know, make the laws and they do all that kind of stuff. And I was wondering to myself, uh, I wonder if they even like me being here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden they gave me a standing ovation. And, that incredible. And um, I got to tell you, I felt very, very, very honored. I really they, did. They store pure talent, a guy that works really hard, that has really yeah. made something of himself and really trudges forward and sort of inspires other people through it all. And it's got this great personality and, and, and that's, they, they see all that and they wanted to, uh, 
to acknowledge that. Something else too that you're very proud of, I think, and it's a beautiful thing, is your your Native American heritage. That yes, is very yes. near and dear to your heart. Tell us about that. Well, uh, as it happens, my biological father uh, was was native, full native, Lakota. Uh, my mother, who is still alive right now, uh, she has uh, Cherokee Creek, uh, Scottish, uh, English uh, in her. My granddaddy that, you know, that raised me, uh, you know, he was English, Scottish. And uh, so, you know, I am proud of it. I mean, I'm not, I've never gone out here and uh, pretended to be full uh, or anything, but the, the part of the blood that is in me, um, I do, I'm very outspoken about uh, Indians' rights, Natives' rights. Um, I have a lot of Native friends that are, uh, quite a few Native friends that are actors and actresses. Um, and I really take that part of myself to heart. Yeah. I love, um, I, I love the fact that that's in me. Yeah. And uh, of the original people. Right. And uh, you know what? I'll always be outspoken about. Uh, I got a great T-shirt that says. Uh, Merciless Savage Indian on it. And down at the bottom, it says Declaration of Independence. And a lot of people have asked me, oh, come on. It doesn't say that in the Declaration of Independence. Ah, read all the way down. And you'll get down halfway, a little bit halfway or past halfway of the Declaration. And you'll see where the forefathers wrote that. Yeah. So I do it. I, I wear that shirt a lot. And um, I got the tattoos of all natives on me. Um, I just want people when they see it, it's just kind of a reminder, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a reminder of what happened, when it happened. Yeah. And what ha why did it happen for a reason anyway? You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. But, um, hey, you can't go back. You got to. You got to keep pushing forward. Go forward, right? Exactly. Absolutely, and that's what I do. Yeah, I keep pushing forward. You know, and you know what? I do love to. I do love to talk to younger fans. Yeah, younger musicians. Mm -hmm. Um, and give them, you know, my perspective on if you have a dream. Yes. Uh. And if you got a dream, you know what? Go out there and make that dream happen. Uh, I had a dream. Um, my dream was was to play music and make a living at playing music. And by hook or crook, I wasn't going to let anything stop me. Okay? If you've got the drive and, and, the, and the, you know, the, the focus, you got to be focused, got to be willing to sacrifice. But you know what? If you've got all of it and you want it bad enough, hey, go out there and get it, you know? Right. Go out there, dream big, dream real big. And then all of a sudden, if you don't exactly meet that real big dream, maybe this one's a little bit smaller. Right. But you made it. You right. I mean? Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Have you thought of doing motivational speaking, things of that nature? You'd be great at that. I got asked, would I do that? And I would love to. I mean, I I would love to go out if it was the right kind of situation and uh, do motivational stuff. I think I could do that. Yeah. And uh, it would be fun. It would yeah. be it would be a lot of fun, especially uh, nowadays with the way things are with yeah. uh, young people and, you know, and what's going on in this in this world. Right. The un the uncertainties, uh, the confusion. Uh, you know, you 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 wake up every day and you think, well, when I wake up today, what what am I going to hear next? Um, you know, and and I think with the young people today, uh, that plagues them. Yeah. I really I, I do. I really do. 
Yeah. Uh, it's a very confusing world out here right now, man. It, it's all changed. It's all now uh, downloads and, you know, it's a totally yeah. different. The whole record industry has changed profusely. Oh, my God. Oh, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to have you back for part two on that one, huh? Oh, big time. Yeah. <laughs> Put ice in the glasses, folks. He has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me to ask you, uh, some of the viewers asked about uh, Rumble. Tell us about that. Oh. Yeah. That's cool. Rumble. Indians that rock the world. Um, I, You know what, man? I got a really, my good friend, his name is Stevie Salas. Uh, Stevie played with, oh my gosh, he played with Rod Stewart. He's played with Mick Jagger. He's played with, I don't know, countless other people. He's a good, really good, really good guitar player. And he's a good Indian, uh, Apache boy. And he came up with this whole thing with partners doing a documentary on natives that you might not think were natives but it's called Indians that rock the world. And he starts back in the sixties and he even delves into the fact that when Indians in the South, uh, created these rhythms, that possibilities that, uh, the African Americans that were on farms and stuff picked up on that. Mm. You'd have to you'd have to watch this. It's really cool. Really good one. Huh? And um, I went on there and commented on a on a great guitar player mm. for his time. Played with George Harrison. He had his own thing. His name was Jesse Ed Davis, and Jesse Ed Davis was a native. And uh, uh, Jack and I used to love listening to him. So you know that that's a good film. I mm. urge everybody uh to search it out and and look at it watch it because yeah. it's really good yeah that is cool that is really really cool great stuff i tell you great conversation and people have been commenting throughout my friends some of them like we can't wait to see you guys and it's just been like awesome right. yeah this has been really really amazing what are some of those continued uh I'd like to ask the guests you know some of the continued blessings and joys in your life that propel you to continue doing this. I mean, you've done it for a long time. And again, two phenomenal bands and organizations to be affiliated with. You could easily, as I said, be, you know, there with your uh, feet in the sand and drinking this hand and swinging in a hammock, just saying, Hey, I've done my bit. I've, I've, I'm good, but you still have this passion and drive to want to connect, collaborate, entertain, inspire, and, you know, pump out the music. What is it? that is uh, inspiring you to continue to do that in your life, those blessings? Well, first of all, I am a restless spirit. Um, I can't sit still. I mean, I, uh, I love having a guitar in my hand. I love entertaining. Um, I was always, that's the way I've always been as a kid. Uh, I had to keep moving. I had to keep going. But I have been, you know, I've been blessed in my life, uh, you know, with uh, a good partner, a uh, good lady. Uh, I've got a, a beautiful daughter uh, who is now 30 years old. She's off doing well in her life. Um, I've been blessed with band members uh, that we all respect and love one another. Uh, I don't know, man. I... You know, for me, I started out um, in this life, in this business, and I didn't expect to be where I'm at today. Um, I, I don't take it for granted. I look at it like, you know, I'm proud and happy that I opened my eyes every day and is able to uh, get up and have a full day uh and go fishing maybe and you know and enjoy the things like that but really what i really really enjoy i enjoy standing on that stage and playing that guitar that's what i really enjoy um i, I mean 
I, I, I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine not doing it. I just, I don't. I cannot. So, you know, I guess there comes a time in everybody's life sooner or later that uh, <laughs> they have to, I guess, you know, call it a day, but mm. I'm not going to do that. I mean, yeah. um, uh, you know what, just, uh, uh, just keep me up, prop me up, put a guitar in my hand and let me have at it. That's <laughs> it. Right. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. That's, I tell you. And that's, you've been doing it a long time. As I said, my friend, it's just been really, uh, extraordinary. And just think about, I mean, do you, do you have some personal favorites of the material, whether it's Leonard Skinner or Blackfoot, that are some of your favorite songs? I know it's hard because and there's a great picture of you in the early days. That's Woo! A good shot, huh? Woo! There you are, ready to go. Young, young puppy. <laughs> yes, you are ready to go. But uh, do you have some? Uh, yeah, I know it's like peekaboo. You have some uh, favorites. Uh, I mean, it's very hard because again, like I say, whether it's Leonard Skidder or uh, it's um, Blackfoot, you have so much music. It's hard to really pick. But are there a right. couple of songs that are your personal favorites? Well, if you get into, you know, if you get into Leonard Skinner. Um, I do have, I mean, every, well, we're playing, you know, we play uh, when we pick song list to go out every year and tour and tour on. Yeah. Um, of course, we start at the beginning with MCA and we know that we're going to end with Freebird, Alabama and Freebird. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you fill in in between and I love uh the fact that we do one of my all-time favorites uh with the band has always been tuesday's gone oh yeah um you know i love simple man i love doing that but yeah. one of my favorite songs that i you know thought that alan did an incredible job and i love playing the song it's a deep cut, which is needle in the spoon. Um, I love cry for the bad man. We're doing those in the show this year. Uh, we've gone into some deep cuts this year. You have, but though, oh yeah, oh yeah. A in our set, we pulled out some deep cuts, and uh, I love doing it. You know, um, when it comes to Blackfoot, of course. You know, I love Train, Train, and Highway song. Uh, but I also love an old, a blues, an old bluesy song called Spending Cabbage. I love Left Turn on a Red Light. And uh, there was a song that we had on the Marauder album called Diary of a Working Man I Love. Um, so I do have my favorites. Uh, but, you know, everybody always asks me, <laughs> for many years they've asked me this. What's your favorite Leonard Skinner song? And I always go all of them because they are. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they're like babies. They're like like children. The songs, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You care for them, and uh, yes, sir. Yeah, it's. Yes, uh, you do. Uh, Justine says this year's uh, set list is is pretty badass. So she she's loving it. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Welcome, everybody, yeah. if this is your first well, now, time. Well, hold Welcome. on now. So, Justine, you see this necklace? Justine makes a, a lot of my necklaces. So, she's 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 great at what she does. She's a badass at what she does. So, need to check her stuff out. That is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, keep rocking. Uh, love from Brazil. Brazil's in the house watching. There you go. Viewers watching. Yeah, Brazil. From, yeah, Brazil. We love Brazil. Viewers watching from all around the world. If this is your first time, thanks for joining us on the Gym sure. Masters yeah. show live. Uh, we love having you guys here. Thank so, Ricky, do a simple man solo while uh, 
guest fronting for Blackfoot about six years ago. Cool five minutes. That was really cool. Oh, cool, man. Jack Black. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting question from Jen in Pennsylvania. Do you know anyone who, <laughs> who was at the original Woodstock in 1969? He was. <laughs> he was, Jen. Hello. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And you do the shout outs on Cameo too, which is really, really cool. <laughs> Yes. That's a whole cool thing, right? A whole new thing. Hey, you know what? That is a cool thing. Yeah. It really is, man, that you can, you know. You can do that and connect with everybody. Amanda says, keep kicking the footlights out, Unk. Love you. Amanda oh, Payton. Amanda. That's my niece. Yeah. Welcome, Amanda, to the Gym Master Show Live. You hey, ever uh, you ever have any interaction? One of the guests, too, another brilliant guitarist. Your guys are all in the same circles. Leland Sklar. You know what? I have met Leland and been around him in Nashville. And uh, what a gentleman. Isn't what he? a real. Yeah. And okay. what a, what a history. Yeah. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the yeah. guy, oh, I mean, yeah. I gotta tell you, yeah. that guy's had a serious, serious history. Yeah. You know, it's incredible Tommy. career. Yeah. Absolutely. Somebody that uh, usually pops in towards the latter part, my friend, that just wanted to say hello. And he said, you were awesome. Mr. George Burns is with us. <laughs> George. George Burns, Gracie Allen. Yeah. I tell you, he can't go wrong with that. He's got hey, a cigar George. and he's got, a cig <laughs> he got his cigar and he's got his uh, red pocket square. Always looking dapper. Very and, and, good, George. There he is. You said you knocked it out of the park, kiddo. That's his phrase. And uh, he go, loved man. every minute of it, I tell you. Very and cool. Uh, Very cool. My aunt collected dolls. And uh, when he turned uh, the primo age, she made sure she got this. And it got passed down to me. So some oh, love coming go. in from George Burns himself, huh? I love it, George. Yes. Not too bad. Not too bad. This was awesome, my friend. Truly, truly, truly awesome. And everybody is saying thanks for being here. They loved it. Thanks for all the great comments, everybody. If this is your first time here, we welcome you to join us live. Uh, we're here seven days a week on the Gym Master Show Live series. Cool stuff. And uh, hello from Orlando, Ricky. You're about us. Working for MCA is my favorite Skinner song. Very good. We're doing it this year. So come out. Jack Black says, yeah, man, don't get God angry. No, 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 no. <laughs> Inside the song says, good night, Gracie. Absolutely. Guys, you're the, you're the best. Thanks for all the great levity coming in with the comments. Uh, my friend, this was really uh, terrific. You are really one. You're a class act. You're a super talent. Thank you, Jim. A Thank really you. good guy. Passionate hot for life. And I think that's a fantastic thing. And you just keep out there. Let's definitely stay connected. We'll keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back to the show anytime. Uh, best you. of luck with the continued uh, endeavors, the tour and everything else. And I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, my friend, and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. You got it, buddy. Listen, thank you for having me. You've been a great host and uh, I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. I appreciate that as well. Now you're going to have a sandwich? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to go in and have a cold one. How's that? Yeah, you go. That's it. You've earned it. You sang for yourself tonight, my friend. There you go. Really awesome stuff. Thanks, gang, for all the great comments. And uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, Justin says it's great. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, you're Ricky. Uh Merlin in Canada. It's been a blast. Uh, you take care of yourself. Yep. Uh, thank you, Merlin in Canada. You and Claire, who's watching in the Philippines. The Philippines wow, says, thank you, Ricky. Cool. Yeah. All these great comments coming to Priscilla very in cool. Brazil. Heart, guitar, and she's got this going. Yep. And guess what? Jen says, you're now a gym master show lovity. Pretty cool, Woo! huh? Yeah. You. With all the accolades you guys got. And now you're a levity. It's the, you've well, reached the your pinnacle. <laughs> the one thing I want, the one thing I'll leave you with, you know what? We always think about the fans. We love the fans. Uh, yes. It's the most important part of this whole thing for us, you know? Yes. And uh, I can't thank them enough. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Right back at you, my friend. You be well and uh, love coming in from uh, Pennsylvania. Keep on rocking. 
This was great. Thanks, Ricky. Hashtag music is life inside the song. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ricky. Absolutely. You're welcome. Pleasure. Good stuff, my friend. You're the best, Ricky. Thanks for all the time. Really a fantastic conversation. And uh, You got it, Jim. Thank you. Keep up all the good work and continue blessings in your life, my friend. Same to you, my friend. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers. Wow. What an icon, huh? And a great guy. You know, that's what's cool about this uh, series that we do. This is your first time here. It's good to have you with us. Uh, scroll back and take a look at the other almost 800 episodes we have done of this series, and you'll see some really amazing people who have come through as guests from Broadway, Hollywood, TV, film, music, stage, food, sports, comedy, inspiration. And uh, we have these uh, wonderful conversations you know, that are epic. Nothing is scripted. There's no pre-planned questions. We just let it flow, sort of old school, like Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson, some of the legendary talk show hosts, because I work in TV and radio, so pay, paying homage to them, and uh, doing it with a modern vibe, modern twist of today as well, which is fantastic. Really cool to have uh, Ricky with us and to learn a little bit more about his life, uh, the family behind the scenes, what it was like you know, when he was a kid coming up the ranks, uh, working with uh, Leonard Skinner. Of course, he talked deeply about some of the uh, the high points and the losses and and also uh, co-founding Blackfoot which was extraordinary too and and how he's really you know in his zone his bliss as he said is when he's on stage and uh, and you can tell and what's really cool is you got a chance to see the man behind all of that as opposed to just talking about the traditional stuff that's why we don't call these interviews we call these on the Gym Master Show Live, I love to have conversations. There's a difference between a typical interview and conversation. Interview is just saying, okay, talk about the movie, talk about the book, talk about the CD, and thanks for coming. We really like to um, have some great conversations. This is a fantastic photo as well. We were sprinkling in some of these during the course of the conversation. Again, he's very proud of his Native American heritage, which I think is awesome. Some iconic photos. Look at this cool shot too. Always giving back. And again, you know, he's been doing this for a long time. And even took a stab at acting when he was out in Hollywood. Commercials and other cool stuff that he did. And uh, he really is a multi-talented guy. But the, the bottom line is, is a, he's a cool guy. You know, he's a straight shooter. He's authentic. He's real. Um, uh, passionate. He loves life. He loves what he's doing. He's right there, you know, in South Florida, fishing, doing his thing, got his boat. But uh, he could easily say, you know, I've I've done all I've had to do, but he has this desire to still collaborate, communicate, entertain, as he's been doing. There's Leonard Skinner in the early years, as is this shot too, Leonard Skinner in the early years. Um Something that's just in his, uh, you know, when you do something and you're passionate about it and it's something that speaks to you and you love it, no matter what it is you do, it doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be television and radio like me. It could be whatever it is, whatever your passion is. As Ricky said, get out there and get it and share it with the world. You know, work on it, tweak it, perfect it, but uh, share it with the world because when you do, uh, your heart and soul will be fulfilled. And then when it is, everybody, they'll get that vibe. They'll get that energy from you. They'll know that you are really in your zone and you're living life, you know, authentically uh, inside the song. Let's take a look at some of the comments. You know, we're a very interactive show, which I love to do. So I consider the folks that are here commenting our studio audience. So this is kind of like, again, the uh, talk shows on television. We don't call it a podcast. It's really like a talk show on television. Some of the old school ones with the modern vibe of today. And so you guys are the studio audience. If you're commenting live right now, thank you very much. We appreciate that. You guys are on fire. If you're watching this later on here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, definitely uh, leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well. You know, when you do that, what happens we love it. We really appreciate it. But YouTube also sees it. And then they take the episode, they see all that activity, and they blast it out to even 
more people around the world. We have an international audience already, but then they take it. So when you leave a thumbs up, there's a little thumbs up icon there on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much inside the song. Really good interview. I appreciate that. That's what we love to do. The the conversations as we as we call them. There is a uh, thumbs up uh, button there or a little thumbs up icon on the YouTube channel. Give this episode and all the ones, if you really enjoyed it, gang, help us out. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Drop a comment on the YouTube channel underneath this episode and all the episodes you love of the Jib Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. And don't forget uh, to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's that red button there. There's no cost to do that. Click that and make sure, make sure, make sure that you click the notification bell. What is that? There's a little bell icon next to the subscribed red button. Click the notification bell. So that way there you'll you know get notifications from us. You'll keep abreast of all the episodes, all the shows, and all the cool guests and your opportunities to be interactive with us as well. Let me tell you, tomorrow, ho, ho, we've got another iconic guest. This is Glenn Hansen, internationally acclaimed illustrator and animator. And boy, his designs are extraordinary. Glenn is going to be with us tomorrow. We're really, really looking forward to that. And then we've got Donna Sunken Shore. She's a life coach, chef, and speaker, even a fertility expert too, author of Pop and Pass 40. She actually is somebody very inspirational because uh, she had a child at 43 when people said, never going to happen. So she really is something else. She's with us on Friday. On Saturday, we have two-time Dove award-winning singer, Billy Gaines is going to be with us live, and he's going to be on location in Dallas when he's with us, which is going to be really cool. Nick Jameson is joining us, actor, voice artist, comedian, singer, musician. He is also, he was with the group Foghat. Remember Foghat? Yeah. He lives in Iceland, in Reykjavik, Iceland. He's made his home in Iceland. He's coming on the show, and uh, but he was in the group Foghat. And also he is a comedian and he's very funny. And he's voiced so many characters. Uh, he's done voices for Scooby-Doo, for the Flintstones, for Star Wars, animations, video games. He's going to talk about that and do some voices as well, which is really cool. Then we've got Christian Ganeer. He's joining us live from Hollywood, the actor. He's starring in that Netflix the very popular Netflix series, Stranger Things. And uh, that's going to be cool. Did you see the episode when award-winning actress Lee Purcell was with us? That was a cool one as well. And also we had Daphne Maxwell-Reed with us, legendary actor. She has, uh, oh my God, she was, she was a real sweetheart, a fabulous person. She was in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but she also was on so many TV series, Simon and Simon and Snoops. Her husband is Tim Reed, another legendary actor. She was with us as well. Again, some really cool people that uh, stop by the Gym Master Show live series from all different backgrounds. When we, when I put the show together, I wanted variety. I didn't want just the same types of conversations and topics, something for everybody. So you can tune in every day and it's refreshing because uh, there's something special and different. And uh, we always have a good time with all of you, with our light, love, and levity, or levity as we say. Let's take a look at some of the comments uh, as well. Uh, Jen Barry is going to be heading in for some bed wiggles tonight. That's cool. There, <laughs> She's going to be wiggling in the bed in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, yes, he does laugh from the soul. I agree. 110%. That's the best. If you're going to laugh, Make it a soulful laugh from the belly. <laughs> Use the diaphragm and get that air, gang. And uh, take a look at a few more comments coming in here. And uh, Uniclair, Mayan, we love when you're here from the beautiful Philippines. Have a good night, day, Jim, everyone. That's right. You know, it could be morning when you're watching, day, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is. We're just happy you're here. Another great show today. Bye for now, because I've got a lot on my plate. Cheers from the Philippines. We love having you here. One of our Gym Masters show. Love it is. Absolutely. You're very welcome. Absolutely. And uh, Kathleen Walker in New York City. Thank you, Jim and Ricky. 
have to hit the archives for what I missed. Yes, lots of archive watching. We archive all the episodes on our YouTube channel here. So if you ever miss anything or you want to see something again, or you came in and, you know, maybe in the middle of our episodes, you can see them all here intact on our YouTube channel, Gemesters TV. Priscilla says from Brazil, it was amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, inside the song, really good interview. Thank you very much. One of our great conversations. And uh, Louise says, thank you, Jim. My pleasure. Jim Berry says, Ricky is so cool. Yes, he is. Absolutely. All kinds of cool stuff. Guys, uh, scroll through our YouTube channel and you can see the folks who've been with us and also some of the folks that are coming up. We're super excited. We have so many great people that are coming on the show and just having all of you, you guys count whether you're watching live or you're watching this Memorex, you're watching it later on. We love good having you, Jack Black. Cool to have you here. Justine, thank you very much. Awesome interview, Jim. Appreciate it. I hope you guys uh, that are discovering us for the first time, spread the word about our show. Tell everybody about our series. It really does take a village to grow and expand and put out all this content. Um, almost 800 episodes we've done in just two years uh, live, seven days a week. Yes, he is. He is. Uh, he's a cool guy. Edward says, thank you from Virginia. Edward, thank you. And again, we hope you guys will join us again right here on the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. You guys are truly, truly fantastic. All our regular viewers from around the world and all new folks who are discovering our show. Every time we do an episode of our show, we always have new people watching either live or they watch it later on. Mm. Uh, this is available right now. Yes, the YouTube episode link there. You can actually gang, you can actually share this on your social media. As soon as I, um, well, no, actually you can show it now, even while I'm still talking, <laughs> you can actually share it. There's a share button on our YouTube channel and you can click share. And what that'll do is when people watch this episode or any of our episodes, it'll bring them right back to our YouTube channel and uh, they'll view it right here on our YouTube channel. So if you want to share this episode or any of the others, just click the share button that you see on our YouTube channel underneath this episode. After you leave a comment and you click thumbs up, uh, <laughs> click the share button and you can share this on uh, your social media. You know, a lot of our viewers like to share things in advance, uh, helping us promote these episodes. But feel free to do that. We would love that. Thank you for that great suggestion and uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so J uh, Jen says, Jim, you got a new red light in the back there next to the green light. You mean back here? No, that's actually, well, I would say, because we're showing a wide shot of our set. So I would say that's been here for maybe a couple of months. That, that the light all the way back there. Yeah. Yeah. Good eyes. I think you said that your favorite color is orange, right? You love orange. Um, again, my friend, you did a great interview. Uh, Ricky texted me and asked me to tune in. I'll be sharing my brother. Thank you very, very much. And uh, take a look at some of the other episodes we've done. Uh, iconic Melba Moore was with us recently. <laughs> Legendary Melba Moore. Ava Cherry was with us recently. Leland Sklar, of course, as well. It's amazing. The Pointer Sisters, Anita and Ruth Pointer, were on our show recently. Lucy Arnez, daughter of Lucio Ball and Desi Arnez, right here on the show. Marion Ross, who played Mrs. C on Happy Days, here on the show. Sally Kirkland, the legendary actress. Stopped by the Gym Master Show. Melissa Manchester was here on the Gym Master Show live and so much more. You guys, look at all these comments coming in. We love you all. Around here, we don't say goodbye. We say see you later. Hasta la vista. Uh, we say moi loop. We say slancha, ciao, cheers. Um, shalom. <laughs> Take it easy. Be well. Love one another. Take care of one another. That's what we say here at the Gym Master Show live. Um, spread the word, share the lovely, tell everybody about our series. If this is the first time here, we welcome you and we always have a good time. And, uh, 
Yes, Jen. Green is my favorite color. Yes, that's the Irish in me. Loving the green. You got it. So we always have to have some green on the set. Uh, I'm, I'm balanced when I have the green. <laughs> There's Ricky's uh, website. Can you check out events, things that are going on with his work with uh, Leonard Skinner and uh, Blackfoot and everything else too, uh, right there for you to peruse. My pleasure to show. Linda Odell in Florida, St. Augustine, one of our regular lovelies. I really enjoyed tonight's show with Ricky. Thank you, Jim. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah. And um, there's no word for goodbye in Kamachi language. That's good. That's I like that. So we say see you later and take care and be well. Uh, and we say be good to one another, love one another, and uh, and Stop by and see us again here at the Gym Masters Show live series. Really a pleasure to have you guys here. All right, that's a wrap. This was really fantastic. Another one in the books with a phenomenal guest. We thank Ricky. We thank all of you for joining us here. And we hope to see you soon. We'll be back tomorrow um, right here. I'll be in this host chair waiting to entertain and inform, inspire, laugh along with you and learn a lot about life and all the other things that we do Um in a very ad hoc way that isn't scripted, you know, I, it's just conversational and it's fun. And, uh, we always have a good time. We always, we always learn something new. So gang, thanks for being with us here on the show. We love you all and, um, uh, love one another. That's it. Yes, brother. Yes, my brother. Thank you for that. Uh, you're very, very welcome. The pleasure is, is all mine. You, uh, you guys, again, uh, don't forget to love one another and be good to one another. And don't forget to love yourself, as we always say. Don't forget to love yourself. Take care of yourself, too. Very important. You know, A lot of us, we're always taking care of everybody else. But it's important that you make sure that you breathe deeply, too, and take some time for yourself. Very important to do that. Hearts coming in from Kathleen in New York City. Thanks, Kathleen. We appreciate it. All right, gang, we'll see you on the next one. Jim Masters here. Thank you for your time this time till next time. Appreciate all of you and uh, you guys take care. And if you're watching live, we'll see you tomorrow night. If you're watching this uh, later on in the archives, stay right here. Another episode comes right up on the Jim Masters Show Live. Be well. Cheers. <laughs>